Hi, welcome to another NYU Respiratory Department um, neonatal transportation training video. Today we're going to talk about conventional ventilation with the cross vent ventilator. This is our circuit that we use. And this circuit, it has the inspiratory line and the inspiratory limb right here, pressure line right here, and our expiratory limb like this. All right. We also use a flow sensor, and our flow sensor looks like this right here, a little purple flow sensor, and we connect it right here. And we're going to attach this to the back of the transporter device. The flow sensor has a blue line and a clear line. The blue line goes to the blue notch right there in the middle. The clear line goes right there to the middle. And this is the pressure line. It goes over this nozzle right here. It says proximal, or it says gauge. And we put it over this notch right here. It's a little bit difficult, takes some practice. You just kind of press it up and over the nozzle with a good grip. All right, and the patient or inspiratory limb, we get right over here, pushes on, and the expiratory limb has this like nozzle connection also. So you get it up and over with a good grip. And we make sure that our gas flow is pointed to conventional, conventional, and our gas is on and on and we're connected to our air and oxygen hoses in the back. We have our test lung here, and we're gonna turn on the cross vent. And when we do that, we're gonna hit set up right here, and then we're gonna do a leak test. Set max pressure knob to maximum. This is our peak inspiratory pressure knob. You're gonna set it to the maximum. Install circuit and test lung. Adjust flow to 10 liters per minute. This is our flow right here. And so we're gonna knob it to 10. And then press enter. And it's gonna run a leak test. Passed. Now we go set up menu, main menu, main menu. And when we're here, our pressure's all the way up. This is a pressure control ventilator. And so if we wanna set our peak pressure, and we want to set our PEEP, we use these knobs here. And we can visualize the peak pressure here and the PEEP here. So the peak pressure right now is 25. If I want to do 20, I'll just knob this down a little bit. I could read 20 here and I could see 20 on the graph. So say 20, 20 right now over a PEEP of 10. So I'll increase my PEEP. I could see my PEEP here and the baseline PEEP on the graph. So PEEP of 10. Peak pressure of 20. You hear this whistling. The whistling's coming from this piece right here, this peep valve. We could remove this piece. It comes with the circuit, but we just snap it right off, and we don't hear whistling. And it's just a peep valve, which we don't need because we have internal peep in the machine. So you could just discard that. So now you don't hear that whistling. So now we're in, you could see the mode is SIMV mode or AC mode or CPAP manual, which we won't use, and I'll explain this CPAP manual. We're gonna do SIMV mode for invasive ventilation, intubated or trached. You could set, as you see, our peak pressure, our PEEP, and our flow I'll talk about, or your SIMV rate you touch, and you up and down. So if we want a rate of 30, we up and down it to 30. If I want an eye time of 0.3, let's say, I press it and use the arrows. My flow is right here. I knob my flow to what I desire. And this is based just on patient need. If they're flow hungry or flow starved or seem like the baby's retracting, we can give them more flow. Eight liters of flow is a decent starting position. And if you think that the baby needs more, we just always increase what they could get, maybe up to 10 if they need. But eight is a pretty decent starting point. So eight liters of flow, we could knob right there. So you don't touch it, we knob that one. 
Constant flow is off right now. Constant flow being off or on determines what our mode is. So if I turn constant flow on, the mode options change and I'll explain those. But with constant flow off, we're going to do SIMV, most commonly with the neonatal population. We don't really do much assist control, and we don't use this version of the CPAP manual. So constant flow remains off if we're going to do the SIMV mode. Flow trigger, that's the patient sensitivity. We can make them harder to trigger the vent or easier to trigger the vent. It goes up to 20. 8 is a decent starting point for flow trigger. And if it seems like the baby is auto triggering the vent a lot, then you just lock them out a little bit more and bring that number up. So I start the flow trigger sensitivity at eight and I start the flow at eight. Uh, it's a decent amount of flow. And your pressure support you touch and you up and down your pressure support, whatever you deem the patient needs. So you input your pressure support, your SIMV rate, your peak pressure, your peep, your eye time, your flow, your flow trigger and that's the mode we're in. So this is invasive ventilation, SIMV, how we make our settings, right? Um, if we're gonna do non-invasive ventilation, we do like a nasal CPAP. And if we're gonna do that, we'll use a ram cannula. So this is the ram cannula we'll use. And with the ram cannula, what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn constant flow on. We're gonna go to CPAP manual and now we have a fixed flow, constant flow. And this is our ram cannula, which we just attach, right, like so. And this is like a nasal CPAP, right? So we put this on the baby, and now all we're doing is we're setting a CPAP, or our PEEP. So we set our CPAP level, and we're gonna set our flow. So how much flow does the patient need? And this is constant flow. And as they take breaths, I'm simulating taking breaths right now, you could see they adjust their pressure to that. But the baby could just take breaths off of this constant flow. Right now it's at eight. We can make it more if we wanted to. And we're setting a CPAP level and we're setting a flow. And there's an eye time option to set, but more important that we set the flow in the CPAP. Constant flow is on. We're in CPAP manual. It also has CMV, which would be control ventilation. The patient couldn't even trigger a breath if they wanted to. That's not something we want. So with constant flow on, we make sure we're in CPAP manual. This is non-invasive ventilation through the cross vent. Invasive ventilation would be, and we'll talk about the alarms, but invasive ventilation, constant flow is off, SIMV. Non-invasive ventilation, constant flow is on, and we're doing CPAP manual. If we have constant flow off, and this CPAP manual, you could set two numbers. It could be like sort of like a biphasic setting for the baby, but it does a lot of auto triggering. It's really difficult to work with. So we mostly transport non-invasively with this nasal CPAP type setting. So our flow trigger is off in this non-invasive CPAP setting because it's constant flow. And that's it. So this is non-invasive with the ram cannula or invasive with the test lung here. So invasive, we're gonna turn, okay, constant flow is on right now. To turn constant flow off, instead of pressing it, I have to turn on the flow trigger. So I'm gonna turn on the flow trigger to change constant flow to off. So flow trigger on, constant flow went off. To turn constant flow off, I just press constant flow. So it's a little strange the way it works where you turn constant flow off by press, you turn constant flow on by pressing constant flow, you turn constant flow off by pressing flow trigger. Just understand that these are related, and so you press one or the other to manipulate them back and forth. So now we're back in our SIMV setting. We're talking invasive ventilation, and we have an SIMV rate of 30, peak pressure of 20, peep of 10, flow of eight, pressure support of 10. We'll talk about the alarms. Alarm one, you have low settings and high settings, and peak pressure, rate, and exhaled tidal volume. So the rate, you press low, and you up and down your low rate. Your high rate for your peak pressure, you up and down your high rate. This is your actual P 
peak pressure, your actual rate, your actual tidal volume. So our actual peak pressure is 21, 21. It's just a little off of that 20 that we set. So as I change my peak pressure and I lower it to 19, 19. So I can see my, or 15 now, 15 and 15 here. So this is actual, this is low and this is high. And you just touch the low for the rate, let's say, and you change it. Touch the low for the high and you change it. Exhale tidal volume. Because we have a flow sensor, the flow sensor is what makes us read an exhale tidal volume. If we didn't have the flow sensor, we wouldn't get any exhale tidal volume reading. So now you can see that we're setting an alarm limit for low and high exhale tidal volume. And you could also see our exhale tidal volume is 4.5 milliliters right now. Or if you take a big breath, you know, that 39 milliliters was a tidal volume because I took a big breath. So that's our exhale tidal volume. We could see it actual exhale tidal volume only in this alarm setting. Alarm two, we have our peep low, peep high, and our actual peep, and our O2 sensor, it's sensing the oxygen right now. And it's probably sensing low oxygen because our blender's set at 21 right now. As I increase my blender here to say 60%, we'll see the O2 sensor should react accordingly, right? So, and then our mean uh, pressure is not set. Our main menu right here, that's it. So that's alarms. This is the settings. Switching between modes, we do constant flow off or on. We do SIMV for invasive ventilation. We do CPAP manual with constant flow on for non-invasive ventilation. This is our alarm silence button. This is where we find our alarms. Main menu. Um, it says here external battery. We're plugged in right now. If we were to unplug, you would see battery. If I could simulate the unplug. We're unplugged and it'll say battery, right? If we were to have a battery, um, we have two and a half hours of battery life in this uh, crossbed. However, if you press and hold in the middle of the graph for about three seconds, it dims. In this dim, we get six hours of battery. So if you ever get stuck without a power source and you're on battery, make sure to dim your screen by pressing and holding in the middle of that graph right here for three seconds. And that gives you a lot more battery life, almost doubles your battery life to almost six hours at a full battery. All right. And as soon as you touch the screen, it, it undims. So that's, um, that's really the basics of cross vent ventilation. And um, we'll talk more in future videos how to do nitric oxide with this. Thank you.